Dolph, are you pretty good about getting a physical once a year or does your wife have to stay on top of you about that? Does Veronica have to harass you, basically? She has to harass me. Okay, I figured that was the case. That's with most yep. men for some reason. <laughs> I take care of the dentist, so I have to harass her about the dentist. Okay, well, you know, that's good. You're balancing each other out there. And yes, we get a physical once a year. We go to the dentist hopefully twice a year. But what about your retirement plan? Financial guru Susie Orman says it actually needs regular checkups too. Obviously, I have my own must-have documents, but it's not just enough to button it up once. Every year we look at it and every you know, time something changes in our lives. Looking at that every single year, making changes as necessary, what do you think should be included in an annual financial checkup, Dolph? Well, first of all, ask yourself how many financial checkups have you had in the last five years? Hmm. And that's the first question you have to ask yourself. And How many should we have had, I guess? Five, at least. Okay, at one, least one at time least, a year. Okay. Yes. I mean, if, you're, if you have an advisor and you're not doing a full rev- checkup every year, then shame on that. If you're doing it yourself and you're not looking at it, and we're not just talking about looking at statements either. When you look at your statements, sometimes you're afraid to open them up, but you look mm-hmm. at statements all the time. This is something I've taken pride in what we do here is my team makes sure we send a letter out, we get a phone call out, and we do everything we do to say, hey, let's come in and spend 15, 20, 30 minutes going over what we have now, make sure we're still on the same track. And during that checklist, if you want to call it, or that annual review, we want to see, okay, where are you at with growth? Okay. Check. Where's your Social Security standing at this time? Check. How are you preparing for health care? Has that thing changed at all? Check. How are we attacking taxes? Check. How's your debt looking? Check. How's your savings and your extra money sitting? Check. How much money you have protected versus how much you have at risk right now? Check. How much income are you projected to have next year or the year after that? Check. Those are the eight big things that we focus on. And we have to put a check mark at the end of each one of them. Because when we're talking to people, we have those things change, believe it or not, two or three of those generally change every year without you realizing it. The debt goes up, the savings go down, or vice versa. Well, there's Jerry and Elaine. I know they're from Seinfeld, and my favorite shows. Let's just use them, <laughs> keep the names unhidden. But Jerry and Elaine, they were 53 years old when I started working with them. Okay. They're now 64 years old. And I can tell you, the, between 53 and 60, we, I notified them for checkup reviews, and they, they refused. They just said, no, we're fine. We're just we're going to let everything run its course. And their plan was to retire at 64. So finally at 61, I was like, hey, everything's coming up. Let's get a review. And then I said, no, I said, you know, I'm going to drive to you. We okay. really need to sit down and go over this thing. So I drove out to Stallings, and we, met, we sat down, and we talked for almost three and a half, four hours. And they could not believe how their situation has changed between their debt, their health care, and all this other stuff, mm. and having to rearrange a lot of stuff for the portfolio. And they're like, oh, I don't know if we're going to make it to 64 to retire. We might have to go to 66, 67. Oh, goodness. I said, I said no, we're going to figure this out. Hence the long conversation. Hence we moved it around. We got it figured out, and happily they retired at 64. That's great. Got them, got them back on track. But what they were procrastinating, thinking, no, we're okay. No, everything, I'm sure everything's fine. I'm sure everything fine and everything fine are two different phrases, Kristen. You can mm-hmm. do it any which way. And some people just want to think everything's fine. It's like, oh, the market's killing it. We're doing great in our, our strategies and so forth. But if your strategies are in the wrong place, it doesn't matter what's going on in Wall Street. You're going to be losing money. And the best way to make money is not to lose money.